I'm just popping in with a quick apology and an explanation as to why I've had to upload this week's video in two parts. I've been struggling with my technology for the last couple of weeks. Uh, basically, I record and edit on my phone and my phone is quite a few years old now and is limited in terms of storage space versus um, how much space these video files take up. And yeah, this week I've just tried all afternoon yesterday to get this video uploaded and it just wouldn't work. So I've had to split the video in two parts um, for which I apologize. And I guess I've learned my lesson. I need to try not to waffle too much and try and limit my future videos to around about 30 minutes if I want to continue. Um, unfortunately, I can't afford to upgrade my technology at the moment. That would resolve all problems, but it's not on the cards. So um, yeah, anyway, enough about my tech issues and my waffle. Uh, let's get on with the knitting again. Oh, I just popped the video on pause then and waited for that hail burst to pass because it got really loud. <laughs> so apologies if the last section background noise was a little bit distracting. I have two more works in progress to show you this week. Um, the first one is a project that I've been working on at the shop and it's living in this lovely bag that I bought from um, Lone Larch designs quite a number of years ago um, and I'm sure you can tell the colours um, are what attracted me but I love this print um, with these deer and these sort of stylized trees and I've been working for a little while on and off on a project called the Midori and it's a pattern from Noro um, which is a Japanese brand of yarn I'm sure you've heard of Noro before um, and the pattern is basically just two rectangles um, that you then join together and you sort of pick up and um, knit a little sort of sleeve band and that's it so it's very simple construction it's knit on the bias and um, I think I started this last summer maybe slight maybe autumn um, and I haven't given this project any love for ages. Um, so this week I managed to finish uh, one side. Um, I don't know yet whether this is the back or the front because they're basically the same and I'm just going to see which one um, looks nicer in terms of the colour pro progression. Um, so you start in the corner and then you just knit out increasing all the way and it's a garter stitch pattern with a couple of drop stitch uh, rows thrown in. So I managed to finish the first piece and I think I put a marker in somewhere. Can you see a marker? No, maybe not. Um, so I was definitely on the D. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Couldn't see for looking then. Um, so I was on this decrease section. So all I had to do, um, if you think I'm knitting it at this way, was decrease down to this point. So I finished that piece and I've started on the second piece. Now this is definitely a tale of when knitting attacks. So um, this is how far I've got on the second piece. I'm still on the increase sections and I have counted up on the first piece that I finished. I need to do 16 of these pattern repeats um, before I start decreasing. And I think I'm on 14, I think I've just done the 14th. Um, I had got to the point um, where I thought I was going to start decreasing as of yesterday afternoon. However, as I was locking up the shop, I looked at the project again and realised that something had gone wrong. <laughs> so I had um, obviously knit on it for a couple of days, put it down, picked it up again, and I had started again. I was only increasing on one side of the row whereas you need to increase on both to obviously get this shape so on this bottom edge from here I'll put in the marker where I had to rip back to this edge was starting to sort of go this way because I wasn't increasing out so I rip, had to rip out and it turned out I had to rip out a whole 50 gram ball so you can imagine that's several several hours of knitting so yeah <laughs> I was not best pleased um, I realised it just as I was on my way out of the door of the shop and we uh, were on our way to see uh, a film yesterday. We went to see Captain Marvel and so it was kind of in the back of my head. You know when you 
realise you've made a mistake. I don't know about you, but I just want to get on and rip it out. Even if I don't start reworking on the project, I just want to get back to a point where I know that I can pick the project up and start working on it again. Uh, but I had to wait until I got home from the movies and I ripped it right back to this marker. And as you can see, I added a couple of pattern repeats. Um, I wanted to get to... Um, it was actually more than 50 grams I ripped out because it was this ball plus um, I'd already joined in another ball. So I wanted to get back to the point where I was joining in this uh, 50 gram ball. Um, so I knit a couple of repeats to get me to that point. Uh, so yeah, I'm hopeful. It's a fairly easy knit. The rows are pretty long um, and they're going to get longer um, for another few pattern repeats um, but then I will get to the bit where I'm starting to decrease again and the rows will get quicker um, so I don't think there's a huge amount of work left in this in the scheme of things um, so yeah I'm excited to crack on with that one again um, and it's nice to give a project that hasn't had some love for a while um, some more attention and as I say this one just hangs out in the shop and um, it's a project that I will happily pick up and knit while I've got my groups because it's fairly straightforward and also it's yarn that we stock in the shop so uh, I always try and work on projects in the shop from yarn that we have. Um, so this is Noro Kibu, I think it's actually discontinued now, um, I still have a few colourways left in the shop and the pattern um, as I say was called Midori and it was also from the um, Kibu book uh, that came along with this yarn. Um, so this is a blend of 54% cotton, 34% wool and 12% silk. I'm interested to see how this bias um, fabric will wear. Um, as I say, it's really simple. You just sew the sides together. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I, don't, I just don't know. I feel like maybe because of the garter and the bias, it will stretch out of shape, but it's an interesting experiment. And hopefully the, because it's seamed up the sides, it, that will help it um, retain its shape. But I think this could be a really fun garment. Not my usual colors, but um, yeah, there are, somewhere in here if I can find some there are some pops of orange <laughs> there, oh there's quite a big section of orange there for anyone who was concerned that I was straying from my usual colour palette <laughs> there is some in there so yeah do not worry do not panic <laughs> uh, I think I'm knitting that on uh, I'm knitting those on my um, Knit Pro Symphony needles. I think they are four or four and a half millimeters. Now I've fixed that error, um, this project will come back to the shop with me and I'll just work on it um, over the next few weeks um, while I've got my classes and between uh, commission work. I'm actually almost up to date with my commission projects. I have got a couple of little baby garments to sew up, which won't take long, and I've just started a new pair of socks. Um, but that's all I've got um, on the commission burner at the moment. So yeah, I'm hopeful that this project will see some love. And final project that I would like to show you today is living in my gorgeous bag that I showed in last week's video, um, gifted to me by the lovely Pamela. Hi Pamela. Um, and this is my Ragnar shrug which is another project that has not seen the light of day for a while. I was just looking around to see if I could find the book that this project is in and I have grabbed it. So um, I started this last, at the very end of last August um, because we went away for the bank holiday week up to Yorkshire to see James's parents and um, we spent a couple of days in the lovely city of York as well and I remember casting this project on to take away with me and this project I, yeah it's I remember talking about this when I first started it so it's from the Rowan book by Arnie and Carlos called New Nordic there's lots of nice uh, projects in this book a lot of um, colour work projects and I was really captured by this project called Ragnar which is just this shrug which basically it's a back and two sleeves um, it's kind of something of nothing but I just really loved it and I couldn't stop thinking about it so I knew I wanted to cast it on so here it is in the book uh, there's, that sort of shows you um, it's only 
a really sort of shallow back piece and there's no front as such. So I have no idea how wearable this is going to be, um, but I just really, I really wanted to make it. It just seemed really fun. Um, so I cast it on, um, finished the back piece, and then unfortunately it got put aside um, in the run up to Christmas last year. Um, and it's been somewhat forgotten about. So I decided to fill up this lovely project bag with the Ragnar Shrug and crack on with it again. Um, so I picked that up this week. I haven't made tons of progress because it is colour work in the flat and the chart is fairly small. Um, flash, flashy the chart without giving away any secret sauce, maybe a little bit. If I just show you, that's the chart and it's all sort of dots and dash, dashes and it's quite small scale. So um, I tend to work on my project. I could work on this one in the shop because it's all from yarns that I stock in the shop. Um, however, when I'm picking up and putting down, um, if I work on something like colour work that needs uh, a lot of attention, I end up spending most of my time counting again and figuring out where I am. So I tend to try and work on simple projects in the shop. Uh, that means when I get home in the evening, I'm sometimes a little bit too tired to tackle tiny charts like that. But anyway, here is the progress that I've made uh, this week. So when I picked this project up, I was about here. Um, I forgot to put a marker in, but I literally just started the um, colour work section. The rib was done and I was about halfway through this first colour work section. So I've put in a fair bit and I, I do really love this um, colour work pattern. Um, it's a nice kind of geometric design and of course, orange and grey, can't go wrong. <laughs> so um i think if you watched my previous video when i last chatted about this i think i mentioned that this pattern is a little bit frustrating so i'm working on the sleeve portion now and obviously the sleeve involves some increases but i've got about five or six more rows um, before the chart runs out. Obviously this is not yet a sleeve and I need to continue to increase. So the chart basically says, oh, just keep on increasing in pattern. And there's no markers to show the pattern repeat, like on the chart or anything like that. So it's gonna require a small amount of brain power on my part. It's not um, insurmountable by any means. I have worked out uh, where the color repeat, where the pattern repeat falls on the chart. Um, but my plan is to um, get this sleeve to the point um, where the chart, the given chart finishes. Um, and then I'm gonna cast on the second sleeve and get that to the point where the given chart finishes. And then I'll be working these sleeves concurrently because it just means that I won't have to um, work out. I won't have to keep too many notes as to um, how the pattern changes with the increases if that makes sense just go row by row and i finish that row and it's done does that make sense whereas if i um knit the sleeve singly i'd have to make copious notes as to what i've done to make the second sleeve um, match so yeah that is my plan for this project uh, looking at it here now it's got like almost an et face can you see that <laughs> there's his eyes and his nose it's got that sort of heart-shaped et face am i the only one seeing that Am I the only crazy? Probably. <laughs> Let's hold this up. Phone home. <laughs> Can I put that away before I embarrass myself anymore? I'm knitting that from a combination of Rowan felted tweed um, in these two greys. I think that one is called Carbon and that one might be Alabaster. I don't have the names in front of me and these labels don't have the um, colourways printed on, just the numbers. And the orange section is knit in ginger, and I'm combining that with some kid silk haze. Um, in the pattern, actually, the orange sections in the colour work are just knit in kid silk haze held double. Um, but I wasn't so keen on that at the time, so I decided to still um, add in the lovely mohair texture to hold it double with the ginger of the felted tweed. So yeah, that, those are that's my main biggest modification I made for that project. I've got tons of yarn in here and you know only one and a half sleeves to do so um, I think I put aside much more yarn than was required. This orange colour is called um, Brick. They don't make this orange anymore, they've got a very similar one but um, it's called something else and they also have a nice brighter orange as well.
Um, so while I've got everything in that bag to show you, this is the back piece. So as you can see, there's not much to it at all. Um, just hanging out in the project bag, waiting for the sleeves to be finished. Um, I've got my charts on this magnetic board from Nipro and this project bag is amazing because I have that big old book um, in there as well in case I need to refer to um, the picture or uh, anything and I've got my magnetic board and all of the yarn and there's still a ton of room in there so I love that bag thank you thank you thank you Pamela managed to waffle on quite a long time this could be quite a big video I am going to chat to you quickly about um, the lovely gift that Caroline sent me though before I um, move on to uh, the shop update section right at the end. Um, so when I got home from my weekend away I found this gorgeous parcel. I was a little bit cross actually, um, not obviously with Caroline at all, um, but with the courier company. For a few days before we went away um, I was having notes put through the door saying they were trying to deliver this parcel but there was no contact information on the little notes usually they give you a number or an, a place where you can get in touch to try and reorganize another delivery um, but there was nothing um, on these little slips just saying we tried to deliver it you weren't home and then of course we went away on Friday and the weekend was atrocious weather wise we came back on Sunday and there was a rather soggy cardboard box just sat on my doorstep. Luckily, Caroline had wrapped up everything in the box really well. Um, but yeah, the cardboard box was just a soggy old mess. And I, I was just cross because it's just like, if you're just going to leave it on the doorstep, why not do that on the first day that you tried to deliver rather than leave it to the third day and then just leave it on the doorstep anyway? I don't know. Anyway, career rant over. So when I opened this box, uh, it was just full of lovely things. I've already shown you the uh, pumpkin spice yarn. Um, accompanying that, it was this absolutely fabulous bag. Um, so as you can see, I haven't got anything in it yet, but I'm going to put a project in this very soon. Um, and it says, I am a yarnaholic on the road to recovery. Just kidding. I'm on the way to the yarn store, which is just so appropriate. And of course, the colour is everything. Um, there's also some lovely uh, cards in here. So there is a card with uh, Caroline's sock design, um, which is the Rainbow Bridges sock pattern, which is gorgeous. And then here's her lovely business logo. So colourful creativity. It's got a lovely rainbow of yarns on the back. I have managed to, to resist the urge to um, tuck into these um, because I wanted to show you them first. But there are these lovely Stroop waffles in, I think that's how you say them, um, dark roast choco, which I guess chocolate. Uh, so there's a pack of those for me to enjoy and get stuck into those now I've shown them off. And then there were tons of fibre in the package and I believe uh, that most of this, if not all, um, was dyed by Caroline herself. Um, so there is this gorgeous green um, with some hints of yellow in that package. Um, and I've been really drawn to greens recently so um, I'm excited to have some extra green fibre in my stash to spin up. Uh, and then there's this gorgeousness which has some purple in it. It just says Merino on the bag there. Um, so yeah, again, there's some lovely yellows, but there's also these purples and blues. Uh, so this one may be the one that goes on to my, one of my drop spindles soon. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, I haven't weighed these yet. I'm not sure how much um, gram wise is in there, but I'm imagining maybe around 50 grams. Um, so yeah, I think that is definitely doable on my drop spindle. And then, oh, wait for this. This is gorgeousness to the extreme. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous rainbow braid. It is just beautiful. Oh, I love it so much. I really want to spin this up, but I also want to save it for best until I'm a little bit better. Um, and I'm also trying to save up to get a wheel at the moment. So it would be really nice to maybe do save this as a special treat to spin on my wheel if I get one. I don't know, it's that like, um, 
always tough decision. Do you save something for best or you just use it to get the joy of it? <sighs> decisions, decisions. But yeah, isn't that gorgeous? So that is Super Wash Merino um, and it's got 16.5. So I presume that is the micron count. Uh, and, uh, I haven't looked. Oh yeah, here we go. Super, it's just colorful fiber, 100% super wash merino, 16.5 microns. How yummy is that? And everything was packaged in this awesome orange tissue paper as well. Um, so thank you so much, Caroline. Um, you really made my week um, such a beautiful package. And um, although I was cross with the courier for leaving the box on the doorstep, it was actually a nice um, welcome home from a weekend away. When you've been away and you had a nice um, time, it's always get a little bit of post holiday blues, don't you, when you come back to the real world. Um, so this definitely helped me combat that feeling. All of this beautiful fibre, the tasty treats and gorgeous project bag. Thank you so very much. I've, I've been so very lucky um, this last couple of weeks. I've had a beautiful handmade cowl, beautiful handmade bag and a package of awesomeness from Caroline. Um, yeah, I couldn't be more thankful at the moment for uh, the wonderful people that I have um, in my life, um, both uh, in real life and the friendships that I've made um, through this wonderful fibre community and uh, yeah the fact that I have met Pamela and uh, Mac met Caroline at the Knit Tea Retreat um, so they are now friends in real life as well as friends on the internet uh, is just wonderful love it I actually have a shop section this week which I know might shock some of you because we haven't had a shop section for a few weeks but over the last week and over the coming weeks, I've got some lovely new things coming in. I've been a bit naughty and spent some money. <laughs> so I thought I'd show you what's coming to the shop this week. I'm gonna start with the commercial yarn first. So I had a massive delivery of Stylecraft yarns this week and um, I have brought in some new colours of the lovely linen drape yarn. Uh, this came out last year um, and it's a beautiful uh, mix of 70% viscose and 30% linen. It's really nice and soft. Um, linen can be a bit sort of crunchy and soften up, be one of those yarns that you need to wear and wash um, before it softens up. But I think the mix of the viscose uh, makes it fairly soft to start with and it just becomes more so. Um, as you use it. So uh, Stylecraft have brought out four new colourways um, in that yarn. So I have brought in all four to supplement the colours that we already had in stock. So there's this lovely purple um, called Eggplant. And then we have the grey, which is called Pewter. Uh, the yellow, which is Corn. And the blue, which is called Denim. Uh, they also brought out some new patterns um, to go with that. I didn't go crazy on the patterns. I think I bought in two. So the patterns are this really nice um, open cardigan and jumper. I really love this jumper. Um, I'm super tempted to have a go at that for myself, but I'm trying to be good because there is another two crochet garment patterns that I will have coming up to show you that I absolutely adore. And I've also got one other crochet garment in progress that I haven't touched for over a year. So I must not start all of the things. Um, and then the second pattern is also another crochet um, cardigan, um, one version with sort of three quarter sleeves and then another which is more um, a short sleeve version. So they're the two new patterns that I bought in to go with the linen drape. And then the brand new yarn um, that I bought in is the Dreamcatcher from Stylecraft. Um, so I'm just going to try and hold the basket out without things falling out. So there's six colours in the Dreamcatcher. As you can see, it's in the sort of cake style, which seems to be super popular at the moment. Um, although I'm not a massive fan of the cake style, but just in terms of storage, they don't fit in my cubbies very well. And they're always falling out. And um, yeah. <laughs> It's a bit of a dilemma for me um, when people bring out cakes. I try to avoid going too over the top with those. Uh, but this one is a nice um, 
blend as well it's quite nice and soft it's a singles yarn uh, it's got quite a nice halo to it so I think it'll be nice and cozy um, it's 90% premium acrylic and 10% wool um, these cakes are 150 grams and they cost 725 so I think they're at a pretty good price point for the amount of yarn that you get in those and the pattern support with those is actually really nice again I didn't buy all of the patterns um, but I've got a few garments and some accessories so there is a lovely oversized cardigan and this pattern also has a scarf and a nice slouchy beanie um, this one is a nice cropped jumper I really like that and I think that's a really nice colorway the blue uh, again the slouchy beanie pattern and then there's a cowl um, on that pattern one more jumper this is a lovely lace pattern jumper so there's a lace panel in the front and down the sleeves with a nice split hem detail again there is a hat to go with that and also a scarf and then finally there is a accessories uh, collection um, so there's a nice simple um, shawl and there's a, a big sort of lacy scarf and then a really nice textured wrap there so um, I'm hoping to find time to cast on one of the hats soon because I think it'll be nice to have a little sample in the shop of that yarn knit up. Also um, in the last week or so the new issue of Pom Pom has arrived which I am super excited about. This is the botanical issue and if I get time I think I'm going to record a separate review video. Um, I haven't done a review book review video for a while uh, but this book ca contains the two crochet patterns that I mentioned earlier that I'm really excited about um, the first one is the water clover top I just love that I think it is so pretty it's so pretty so it's a couple of other views of that top and I think it'll be really nice for the summer um, lovely I like the way um, obviously it's um, styled with a nice tank underneath I think you could um, do that in so many different colours and it would look absolutely beautiful and then the second crochet project in here which I adore is the Divalia and it's a nice kind of cover up um, with tassels and I'm not usually a sort of super fancy fussy detail kind of person but I just think that looks lovely and of course I have a fancy to make that in a nice bright orange colour but look at that patterning it's gorgeous isn't it uh, so yeah the botanical issue of pom pom and last but by no means least um, Miranda who is by Miranda May a local indie dyer here in Cardiff has restocked me with some of her beautiful yarns and some of them are hanging up behind me so I have got a couple of new um, colourways and a new base. So if you can see behind me, these N4 colours, the nice uh, sort of bright green, orange, um, and then the uh, sort of darker green and the red, they're all a new base for Miranda, which is double knit, which is really fun. Uh, so I don't think Miranda's had a double knit before. Um, I've also got some gorgeous Tweedy um, colours, uh, in the middle there the brown and the yellow are tweedy and then um in the top row i've got some really nice new um colorways in her four ply base in particular the ones over here um they're lovely new spring colorways so the m1 is crocus and the second one in is daffodil and if you follow me on instagram you'll have seen some pictures of those particular colorways um on our yarn and yarns feed this week uh, so yeah it's been a fun week in terms of new stuff and deliveries so um, I am excited for um, the new season yarns and I've got some more that hopefully will be arriving in the next week or so. I think that's it for the shop section this week. Um, apologies for the light it's a really grey day here today um, and the window is that side of me so I'm conscious that one side of me is really bright but there's not too much that I can do um, about that we've got a really big window here um, and there's no blinds or anything so I can't change the light that we have um, but I hope it's not been too bad and I hope you've been able to see some of the, the loveliness um, both behind me and the things that I've had on the table here in front of me. I think that is everything you'll be glad to hear I think it's going to be a bit of a long one this week um, so thank you so much for joining me I really enjoy spending time with you and I hope that you have found something in today's video that you have enjoyed seeing. Um, I appreciate your company and I hope that uh, you get to do some of the things that you love this week. 
Until next time, great big woolly hugs to you all. Bye for now.